And right there. There we go. Three, two, and one. Well, Dan, uh, welcome back. Uh, Mayor's Monday here at WSAU, WSAU.com. It's been a while since we've gotten to chat. You know, um, I was on vacation for a while. Uh, I'm running a one-man newsroom, um, so we don't get to see each other as often as we'd like. But, hey, it's uh, when we do, it's, it's always a pleasure. Perfect. Yeah, and thanks. Dan, I, it's, uh, I'm happy to be back with you. It's, it has been a while, so, but I am uh, was excited to talk to you today. Yeah, and well, of course you are because you were just telling me that uh you you had a, a mill rate decline in the village of Plover that I think a lot of people would uh would like to see. Uh because of course we're getting to that time. Again, I know what this is like, the anxiety before the tax bill shows up. Mm -hmm. What's it gonna be? How much is it gonna cost me? Yeah. Uh your residents, I think, are are very happy with their outcome. Yeah, it, we've, you know, Plover's just exploded. And we, I mean, we're at just encroaching on 14,000 people now. We've had um, our home construction residential growth has been through the roof. Uh, our, we're, we've got multifamily housing. We've got single family residential growth. We're just, we're just, just going crazy here with growth. And, um, but our mill rate did, it was last year at $8.37 per thousand. And we're down to $5.14 now. Uh, that's a pretty big, I think, what's that, about 38% um, reduction in our mill rate, which is substantial. Now, what do you, you got to point out, we do got to point out that property values have increased, and we did do a reevaluation during the peak of things. So um, that's that's important to point out. But um, in general, from what I'm told, people can probably expect, you know, if their pro home values went up uh 55% or more, they'll probably see an increase then on their taxes. If they stayed around 45 to 55% increase in property values, probably stay the same. And if they're below for that 45%, um, the expectations is that it'll be, it, they'll actually have a lower uh, property tax bill. We do got to keep in mind though, that we got to keep um, the schools mm -hmm. still got their chunk and the county gets their chunk and mid-state. We just found out today, our technical college actually went down a little bit too. So that's awesome on their part and um and and this should be good news for the village of plover and the residents of plover for sure yeah and uh and you attribute a lot of that to the growth that you've seen obviously uh you've got mccain foods uh expanding there you've got a lot of expansion going on in the business park elsewhere as well but uh you know uh, the thing that a lot of people just keep hammering on uh, is housing. And that is something that uh, not only did your predecessor make a, a priority, but it's something that you've made a priority as well. And as you said, you guys are just booming right now. Oh, yeah. We've had, I think, is we're at 33 new home uh, homes this year. Um, we've got 11 new duplexes. Um, and uh, that's that's pretty good for, for our area. I mean, these are brand new home constructions. We've got Let's see, we've got a couple new subdivisions Well, we, we that are one filled in, another one getting close, a brand new one starting out. We have three, four apartment complexes uh, in various stages, right? Some right in the beginning, we're just finalizing some plans and gonna start moving dirt soon, all the way to some homes already, uh, our residence is already up. So we've got a lot happening in that area. You talked about McCain's, that was $169 million um, expansion that they um, invested in the community. So that is fantastic. And we also have, you remember that Yonkers building? I just got word yesterday that permits were taken out uh, to start the facelift on Yonkers. So I'm hoping that that gets going here in the next month so we can get that Yonkers uh, facade changed to match more of what our amazing artisan fair um, complex has uh, going on over there. So we're, and we got a lot more talk going on in some different areas that uh, I am, I'm ramped up to, to, to get moving on. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it, you mentioned uh, the Yonkers building. That's one project that uh, has really intrigued me because I've seen what the artists and fair uh, building brings. And that is, that is just, uh, I think the kids call it a vibe. That is just a whole vibe uh, in itself. And then you've got uh, this kind of warehouse space over here. That's empty. Yeah. Uh, so you're really going to be, uh, bringing a whole lot of value to that area, not just in the curb appeal, but in uh, what's going to go inside there as well. Well, that's right, because we have over an artisan fair, we got Mission Coffee, which what a success story with Russ and his team, then what he's built. I think he told me yesterday I met with him 
And I think he's in seven different locations now. And that was a little business that four or five years ago, five years ago, maybe something like that, um, started out in a little shop just down the road here from the municipal building. And he's uh, still has that shop, uses that to manufacture his coffee or to uh, grind and brew and do all the stuff with his coffee. Then he's got right in that Artisan's Fair location, he's got um, uh, awesome, awesome uh, business in there. And he's kind of the Plover welcoming center for us also. So he's a great ambassador for Plover. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got Osos, I think one of the best breweries anywhere around that's right there in the same area. The Wellness Garden, Anytime Fitness. Um, we got just so much happening out there. Um, uh, there's a, a hair salon. So, and it, it's cool. It gives you that vibe. You said it. It gives you a vibe kind of of like, a, kind of reminds me a little bit of a place up in Sister Bay in Door County. That's kind of that indoor mall kind of look. Mm -hmm. um, and just a really cool artistic kind of vibe and a place they can go in and people can, you know, have coffee, go over and have craft beer or whatever, and, and kind of enjoy and relax in there uh out of the elements too yeah and uh so for the yonkers building you mentioned the the building permits have been taken out but do you know what that is going to be yet because i guess it, when i look at that you you might see the potential for uh you, they i think they call them a uh, food court type area where you have all kinds of of fancy small business restaurant kitchen areas and you have a kind of a general shared seating area and maybe a uh, a bar beverage area that uh, people could go in and get their choice of what they want for lunch and maybe have a, a drink or two with it as well. Yep. And it, well, it is the same developer that developed the Artisan Fair building. Right now, we're housing temporarily um, the UWSP uh, library while they're doing reconstruction. We're, we're that's uh, the old Yonkers buildings housing their their mm -hmm. uh, books and so forth. So, uh, but yeah, there's some other things that are happening in there i can't really tell you quite yet uh just tell you that there's definitely movement and um and mm -hmm. uh it's pretty exciting and there's grand plans for out front of that whole complex to be an outdoor kind of park uh we've talked about an ice rink talked about some bench and maybe a sculpture kind of park there's some talk uh about what that's going to look like and the conceptual drawings are really, really cool and will just flow and fit right into the Artisan Fair building and, uh, and the Yonkers building. It's going to look a little bit, Yonkers is going to look, that building will look a, a slightly different, but it'll still have uh, kind of stay with the theme from what I'm, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure a lot of places that have empty or dark stores right now are probably looking at some of these concepts and saying, we wish we could do that because I don't think there's, uh, many communities that can say that they've had the kind of success that you have with two uh, big box stores that went uh, closed uh, just within a couple of years of each other. Yeah, well, we've, we're have we kind of developing this corridor. I mean, when we look at look through, you know, where are, where's our downtown area? Obviously, Post Road is our kind of our main street, if you will. Um, and we actually inherit that um, from the state on December 1st is when that project finishes, we do a jurisdictional transfer with Post Road. And we've got some pl big plans with Post Road to kind of create this um, uh, with some banners and some different things we can do on the poles to create a little bit more of that hometown vibe and feel. But when we start down here in this part of Plover and we kind of tie in our Crossroads Commons area, which is where we got Walmart, and Best Buy and Kohl's and all of those great businesses, um, you know, Chili's is out there and uh, there's a new uh, Mexican restaurant that's out there. When we get when we get that uh, Mi Pueblo and um, when we get that tie Plover in into this kind of grand circle, um, we're going to try to, I think, look at connecting things. We've got Heritage Park an amazing Portage County Historical Society located right in the heart of Plover. Um, tying that in with Woyak Sports Complex, then working our way over to Artisan Fair, um, and then out to amazing Lake Pakawa, which was all handicap accessible uh, playgrounds, splash pad, beach, and a paved trail that we are going to plow. We just made this decision uh, just yesterday. We're going to plow the, 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 the trail along the path along the lake um, all winter to keep that open. And when we loop all this back around into Crossroads Commons, we're gonna have quite the circuit for people right. to be able to jump on that, you know, whatever may be coming type thing and travel <laughs> around and see all the great things that Clover has. 
along with kind of going back to that Lake Paco, what's being built right next to Lake Paco? Multi-million dollar farming for the future project and some other big plans uh, and that farming for the future. Oh my God, Michael, that is, those guys, uh, they know what they're doing. They're building something that is going to be a technological amazing piece of education for people around the country to come see what it's about from from seed to store uh, to consumer, how it happens, utilizing the, the, the most amount of the latest and greatest in innovation with technology on how farming happens and how it gets to the to the dinner plate. And that tying all those things in um is going to be absolutely amazing and we are so so excited about what the future is is holding here for clover yeah indeed and and again it's all all comes back to that growth that uh, that we had talked about uh, earlier one more thing we wanted to to talk to you about before we let you go obviously uh village made the decision to kind of break away from the stevens point uh, area convention and visitors bureau uh, give us just the brief, uh, I guess, the elevator pitch of, of what this means for the region. It, I mean, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be welcoming in tourists, but it it does change the way you're going to be handling some of those revenues that come in because of yeah. tourists. Yeah, it really does. And here's the here's the 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 shake of it. Stevens Point's an amazing city. I'll never take anything away from that. We share a lot of similarities, but we also share a lot of unique, different, unique uniqueness and. Plover um, has grown to a point where, where we, all of those things I've just told you, from Heritage Park to Woyak Sports Complex, to the baseball tournaments, to the to the, the to the parks, to our great restaurants, all of those various aspects of Plover, um, we believe that that especially partnering. I mean, because we also have right next to us is we have a pretty awesome campground outside the village limits. We also have an amazing racetrack out there in the town of Plover. And we, we're a destination. We're a place to come. We're, we're looking at 80, 100,000 new people coming to see just farming for the future alone. So come to Plover, see what Plover is about. Um, and, and we really believe that what they're doing up there at SBA CVB is, is fine for them up there. They're doing a good job. There's no doubt. I think that Sarah and Melissa and those guys up there are really you know top-notch individuals. But we believe that taking a different marketing strategy and, uh, and focusing while they're doing their thing, we're going to focus on our on our our pitch and our beliefs on marketing and and what we're going to do is target some a, a little bit different kind of wheels on ramps getting those cars we got three off ramps here on I39 one of the most busiest corridors in all of Wisconsin and we're going to try to we want people to get in here and when they start experiencing and seeing what Clover's all about then they're also going to start seeing and experiencing what Stevens Point is all about. We really think we're going to help the region even more by taking two different marketing strategies. And what's the old saying to, you know, two voices are louder than one or, you know, mm -hmm. doing two different approaches. You know, we think and believe and I'd love to collaborate with them um, in the areas where we see similarities and um, and we want to help them as much as we want to help ourselves. And I think together, if we can collaborate um, but still do things differently. I think we're going to can create an, a, a profound impact on the entire region. We are the bullseye smack dab in the middle of the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Crossroads Commons, one of the most easily accessible retail outlets in Plover it, that in the entire state, right off of one of the busiest interstates in the state, um, especially on a weekend. Um, right before you hit the North Woods. So we want to capitalize on what makes Plover unique, what's made Plover grow. And I've got 14,000 reasons to have done what we did. And that's because we're pretty Plover proud. And we want to showcase this in a much grander fashion than that's ever been done before. So that's what this is really about. And we, our hats off and we appreciate and are grateful and thankful for everything the relationship we had with the Stevens Point Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, mm -hmm. but it's time for Plover to step up to the plate and uh, and and do the very very best we can for the residents of Plover. Yeah, indeed, and uh, you have to at least be doing something because the hotel tax that you do bring in uh, by state law it says that you have to be using a certain percentage of that to bring more tourism 
uh, into the state. And obviously, you've got a pretty big event that's going to be coming up less than a year from now in July. Uh, in fact, it's going to be so busy, Dan, that I, I don't imagine that they might have you put the uh, badge and the police belt back on to direct traffic somewhere uh, uh, along the interstate with the uh, with the uh, U.S. Men's Senior Open coming. So obviously you have that coming. Yeah. Uh, so you're, you're focusing a bit on that. But what else then would you like to be focusing on if it's not uh, big events like that? Or how would you be doing this differently, I guess? Yeah, well, and you're right. We're going to have a lot of exposure and people in both communities. And 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 the goal is obviously to, to you know, we want people to come here, visit, experience Plover, and then and then stay, spend the night enjoy it. Um, while you're here, there's so much to do in the entire region between both the village and the city that, um, that to spend the night in all of our hotels, um, partnering, say with other towns, um, like the town of Plover and, and working together, we share a common name. We, uh, the town of Plover village of Plover. I mean, everybody's seen the billboards they have up there. Uh, those, those also have helped us. They have a great come to plover.com website that focuses on on their area. Uh, and when people come to Plover, the town of Plover, we have experienced um, that benefit directly here in the village of Plover. And we know that the people that come to the village of Plover are going to experience it in the town and the city also. Um, and, you know, in other area events, such as our Celebrate Plover event this year in 2023, next year, that's going to be a two-day event. That thing exploded last year. We had the mm -hmm. grand opening of the park. We had we had more people than we believe than we've ever had before. We had one of the best firework displays and shows anywhere and probably anywhere in the country because nobody else does it on the last weekend of July. We do. So you know how many people who like fireworks will travel across the country to see fireworks after the 4th of July? A lot of people will. And uh, <laughs> and we didn't even realize that whole little niche of people that it's kind of like the people who like trains, the train people. I, I'll compare them to the, you know, firework people that, that people got a passion for seeing these things and they'll jump in their RVs their campers. They'll travel across the country to 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 see events. Uh, and we really hit it out of the ballpark with our fireworks uh, at, being at the last weekend of July. And maybe we just get to use up all the leftovers and we get it at a discounted <laughs> price. Be. I don't right. know. But we got a spectacular show, and we've got bands. Uh, uh, Southbound will be playing Friday night, uh, uh, and uh, all these other great bands will be happening. Uh, now a two-day event, not a one-day event, two-day event mm -hmm. in Plover in the la end of July in 2023. I'll tell you what, I'm I'm going to be there. I, I can tell you that right off the bat. I am definitely going to be there. Uh, I can tell you, I, I told you I was on vacation. I was in Houston, Actually, I got a Friday night fireworks show after an Astros game. First off, I got to see them open right. uh, the retractable roof cool. at Minute Maid Park, which is cool. Uh, but I got fireworks set to Don't Stop Believing by Journey. So I'm going to tell you that the bar for this for me is pretty high. All right. That you've got to that you've got to go over. I mean, if you can get Journey there yourself. Yeah. To play Don't Stop Believing live during the fireworks, then I might be impressed. All right. Well, we're, we're going to keep on building until we got to do whatever it takes to get with the bit, as big a names as we possibly can. But I'm telling you I'm what, the ones it. we had last year were fantastic. And Southbound's another great band that that I mm -hmm. think is amazing. And we're going to lead the whole event off on Friday night with them and go from there. All right. Well, Dan, we appreciate the time. Always appreciate uh, the enthusiasm as well. And, uh, I'm not going to make any promises, but if you get me a Chick-fil-A, then maybe I will take you up on the offer before we uh, started that you said you wanted me to move to Plover. All right. All right. Great text. I'll tell you what, if you can get it done, I'll put my house on the market immediately. All right, boy, you better be careful what you wish for. And uh, don't, don't, don't make, don't challenge me, Michael. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This I, I've been uh, again, my job in central Wisconsin will not be done until we have Chick-fil-A. This is the closest I've ever gotten to a yes. We're going to make it happen. All right. We'll just have to see what the future holds. The future All is right. right for those that plan right. <laughs> indeed. Indeed, Dan. We appreciate the time. We'll look forward to chatting again uh, at some point in uh, 2023 already. Awesome. Have a happy, happy, great holidays. We'll talk soon. Indeed.